Hello everyone, in today's engineering video, it's all about steam power plant. A steam power plant consists of a boiler, steam turbine, a generator, and other auxiliaries. The boiler generates steam at high pressure and high temperature. The steam turbine converts the heat energy of steam into a mechanical energy. The generator then converts the mechanical energy to electric power. Who invented the steam power plant? An Englishman is usually credited with inventing the first steam engine. In 1698, Thomas Savery, an engineer and inventor, patented a machine that could effectively draw water from bladed mines using stem pressure. Savery used principles set forth by Dennis Papin, a French-born British physicist who invented the pusher cooker. Papin's ideas surrounding a cylinder and piston steam engine had not previously been used to build a working engine, but by 1705, Savery had turned Papin's ideas into a useful invention. What are the four components of steam power plant? The major component of these power plants are boiler, steam turbine, condenser, and water feed pump. Steam boiler The boiler has the capacity to convert water into steam. The process of change of water to vapor is produced by heating the water in the tubes with energy from burning fuel. The combustion process is carried out continuously in the combustion room with fuel and airflow from the surface. The resulting steam is superheated fumes which have high temperature and high pressure. The size of steam production depends on the surface area of heat transferal, flow rate, and heat of combustion is applied. Steam Turbine The steam turbine works to change the heat energy carried in the steam into rotary motion. Steam with high load and temperature were conducted to push turbine blades installed on the shaft, so the shaft turns. Due to complete work on the turbine, the pressure and the heat of steam coming into the turbine down to drench vapor, the steam then proceed to the condenser, while the whirling power is used to turn a generator. Condenser Condenser are tools to convert steam into water. The changes are made by the steam flow into a room holding tubes. Steam rounds outside tubes. While the cooling water flows inside the tubes, this is called surface condenser. It is usually for coolant UC water. It transfer rate depends on the movement of cooling water, sanitation devices, and the temperature variation between the steam and cooling water. The method of change into water vapor happens at saturated rate and temperature. Water feed pump. A boiler feed water pump is a specific type of pump used to pump feed water into a steam boiler. The water may be freshly supplied or returning condensate produced as a result of the condensation of the steam produced by the boiler. Which cycle is used in steam power plant? The cycle used in steam power plant is Rankine cycle. Steam Rankine cycle is known as one of the main power generating cycles which consists of four key devices, namely a boiler, a steam turbine, condenser, and a pump. This cycle needs heat input for the boiler, either by burning fossil fuel, such as oil, coal, and natural gas, or by obtaining the necessary heat from renewable energy sources, such as solar, geothermal, and biomass. There may be other options to obtain the heat from nuclear reactors and various industrial processes to drive such cycles for power production. For additional information about Rankine cycle, here is the video. 
Arrivederci. Today's engineering topic is Ronkin cycle. So what are we waiting for? Let's start this right away. Ronkin cycle was named after a Scottish polymath and Glasgow University professor, William John McCorn Ronkin. It is a vapor power cycle. For a little definition, power cycle is a cycle which uses heat to generate work. And since it's a vapor cycle, it uses the vapor phase or in this case steam to rotate the blades of the turbine. It actually utilizes the heat energy contained in coal, oil, or natural gas, and then converts it into mechanical energy and eventually electrical energy, which of course provides electricity in our city and in our homes. One of the best definitions for this cycle is that it closely describes the process of steam turbine systems and is derived from the Carnot cycle, the most efficient thermodynamic cycle, which tells us that power is dependent on the temperature difference between a heat source and cold source. The higher the difference, the more mechanical power can be efficiently extracted out of heat energy. So now, let's talk about the variants or the types of Rankine cycle. We have a reheat Rankine cycle. It is a cycle which we introduce the exhausted steam back into the boiler to reheat it. We also have a regenerative Rankine cycle. We bleed apart the steam into heat exchangers to preheat the feed water before entering the boiler. There is also an organic Rankine cycle. It uses an organic high molecular mass fluid with a boiling point occurring at lower temperature than the water steam phase change. A supercritical Rankine cycle is also one of the types. Just like reheat and regenerative Rankine cycle, water is the working fluid but it is operated at above its critical pressure. So, those are the types of Rankin cycle. But here, on this video, we will only discuss the most basic and fundamental of the cycle, the ideal Rankin cycle. We must be aware first that this operates slightly different than the real Rankin cycle. This is a reversible cycle. Common source of irreversibilities are neglected such as frictional pressure drops and undesired heat transfer with the surroundings. A constant pressure or isobaric process and constant entropy or isentropic process are used for the equipments involved in the cycle. The working fluid is water and it will undergo a closed loop and will be reused constantly. So why do we use water as the working fluid? Well, simply because it is not toxic not reactive, highly abundant, low cost, and good thermodynamic properties. To make a ranking cycle, we need four processes. Process 1 to 2 for the boiler, process 2 to 3 for the turbine, process 3 to 4 for the condenser and finally process 4 to 1 for the pump and that is what we are going to discuss for the next part okay so let's get this started for process 1 to 2 boiler these are the things that we need to remember since boiler is a heat exchanger equipment, a heat is added into the boiler through a fuel, which may be coal, oil, or natural gas. Here, water is converted into steam or superheated steam. This is an isobaric process or a constant pressure process. The temperature and entropy for this process increases. And we can solve the heat addition by using the formula Heat added equals fluid energy out minus fluid energy in, or enthalpy out minus enthalpy in for the boiler. Note that this equation is formed by using a mass and energy rate balance for a control volume at steady state, neglecting pressure drop. So those are the important things that you should remember with understanding the boiler process.
Now, steam can be used in the next process, which is the process 2 to 3 turbine. Turbine is a work generator equipment. It contains series of stages or a set of stationary and moving blades to perform its function. By using the steam, work is generated through the expansion of vapor, which may then be converted into electricity through generator. Compared to the previous process, here, since we have an equipment that involves work, isentropic process or constant entropy process is assumed. Yes, it is assumed because in real world, there is no such thing as ideal. On this process, the temperature and pressure decreases. And the formula for the work is fluid energy in minus fluid energy out or the enthalpy 2 minus enthalpy 3. Note that equation is formed by using a mass and energy rate balance for a control volume at steady state neglecting heat transfer with the surroundings. Steam is now already exhausted and so we need to take it back again to the boiler but there is no pump that can pump steam so we need to convert it first into water through condensation. So this is where our next process comes in. Process 3 to 4 condenser. In order to condense the steam, a heat rejection must occur. Most of the power plants utilize the seawater as a cooling medium to cool down and condense the steam. Condenser consists of tubes to accommodate the heat transfer of steam and cooling water, where cooling water is in a separate stream. This is a heat exchange equipment, so we assume that this is an isobaric process or constant pressure process. The entropy decreases, and the quality of the fluid changes until it reaches a saturated liquid state, so from steam to liquid. The equation is heat rejected equals fluid energy in minus fluid energy out or enthalpy 3 minus enthalpy 4. Note again that this equation is formed by using a mass and energy rate balance for a control volume and steady state, neglecting pressure drop. Last process is process 4 to 1 pump. Pump's main purpose is to convey and introduce back the condensed steam to the boiler. Here, work is needed. That means work is negative. Some plants name this pump as boiler feed pump, and it can be either steam driven or electric motor driven. Again, since this is a work involved equipment, we assume that this is an isentropic process or constant entropy process. The temperature slightly increases and the fluid is in a sub-cold region in the TS diagram. The formula for the pump is work equals fluid energy out minus fluid energy in or enthalpy 1 minus enthalpy 4. Fluid energy out or enthalpy out is greater than the enthalpy in as the pump have imparted energy to the fluid. Note again that equation is formed by using a mass and energy rate balance for control volume and steady state neglecting heat transfer with the surroundings. And one more important thing, please remember that the pump has the highest pressure in the whole cycle. Okay, so let's have a recap. Starting from the boiler, we convert the liquid water into steam. Introduce it into the turbine to generate work and then we condense it into the condenser and pump the liquid water back to the boiler through a high pressure pump. So that's it. Engineering is a fun thing. And it always has been. See you again for our other easy and fun engineering topics. Is engineering? Engineering topics made easy and fun for you.